take the time from when Gorbachev came to power, March 1985, to 2007, when Putin has been in power for seven years. That's 22 years. I ask you to find a single thing in foreign or domestic policies done by the Soviet Union, while still existed, and then Russia proper, that might in any way anger, irk, disappoint the United States. Let me answer that for you. Nothing. Not one thing during that period. Now, what did Russia get as a result of that? First, the enlargement of NATO. So that was number one. Then the bombing of Yugoslavia that was done by NATO, and NATO is, after all, dependent mostly on the United States. Let's face it, right? Uh, the UN did not condone this. So the bombing of Yugoslavia, that's uh, from March 24th, 99, to June 10th, 99. Then uh, Kosovo and recognition of Kosovo, although it had been part of Serbia for centuries. And there were people in Russia who said, you're letting the gin out of the bottle. Because if you do this, then there are other countries that will do the same. And Russia did the same, vis a vis a to begin with. Okay. Uh, Yeltsin was very angry. He made a speech. He said, and of course, this is very Yeltsin-like. He said, we're not Haiti. You can't treat us like Haiti. We're a great country. We have a great past. And Russia will come back. Russia will come back. He was really, really angered. Didn't say the politically correct thing, but he spoke his mind. Uh, then finally, 2000, the year 2000, Mr. Putin is not elected, although elected, um, to the presidency. And one of the first things he does is to ask for Russia to become a member of NATO. Why not be a member of NATO? NATO was created to defend Europe, and perhaps not only Europe, from Soviet aggression from a country that you couldn't predict. There is no more Soviet Union, and there is no more Warsaw Pact. Why can't we create an organization where we're part of it, said Mr. Putin, and act together to protect from some kind of aggression? He was told, go take a walk, basically. What about some kind of partnership or becoming part of the European Union. <clears throat> Again, and this is all documented. Everything I say, except when I say my opinion, is documented. You can look it up. And he said, they, no, you know, you're too big. Your country's too big. You can't. Uh, and all the while, Russia was being reminded that it's no longer really that important a country. Now, one of the things you must keep in mind is that much like the Americans, the Russians believe that they have a mission, that their country was selected by destiny. Now, you know, my being French, I laugh at that. I laugh both at you and at them. Because we French know that we're the best, and we, don't, we have no, 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 we have no mission. You know, the, that's it. But seriously speaking, that's a fact. And so the sense of losing this, this, this um, aura of greatness, of being told, we don't care about you. The uh, the reaction of the average Russian to that was one of. You're, uh, you're insulting me. You're not, you don't respect me. And so the anger 
gradually. And the anger focused on Gorbachev. Many, many Russians figured, you sold the country. You don't stand up to these men, to, these, to the United States. And then the same thing for Yeltsin. You'd be surprised how unpopular Gorbachev and Yeltsin are today in Russia. Maybe 5% support them, precisely for that reason. Well, there are some others as well that have to do with economic things, but nonetheless. So now here we have Putin, who, as you know, as soon as 9-11 happens, calls up Bush Jr., W., and offers his help. And yes, and does help in Afghanistan. And if you want to have your soldiers, your military people in, in Central Asia, right on our borders, be my guest. And in Georgia, absolutely. So it's not just words. You know, we, we want to fight terrorism together. And... Uh, gets nothing in, in, in exchange. So finally, in 2007, in Munich, um, speaking to the 20, the group of 20 in Munich, Putin says this. This is February 10th. I think it is obvious that NATO expansion does not have any relation with the modernization of the alliance itself but with ensuring security in Europe. On the contrary, it represents a serious provocation that reduces the level of mutual trust. And we have the right to ask, against whom is this expansion intended? And what happened to the assurance of our Western partners made after the dissolution of the Warsaw Pact? Where are those declarations today? No one even remembers them. But I will allow myself to remind this audience what was said. I would like to quote the speech of General Secretary Mr. Werner of Brussels on May 17, 1990. He said at the time, quote, the fact that we are not ready to place a NATO army outside of German territory gives the Soviet Union a firm security guarantee. Where are these guarantees? And do you know what the answer was? The answer was, yes, but that was guarantees given to the Soviet Union and your Russia. Well, what kind of a reaction would you expect? 